Hi, I'm Mark. Welcome back to Foothill Paint Fabrication. Well, back on Project Ruby and today's project, getting started on the firewall. Now, I have no idea how far we're going to get. There's a lot of work, a lot of thinking, a lot of spot welds to cut, uh, just a lot of work to do. So this will probably be one of uh, a few videos on the firewall, but I do want to get started on it because I, uh, I want to get Ruby off the cart to spray but there's still a lot of work to be done while Ruby's on the cart and uh, I just need to be patient. You know, um, putting it back and forth on the rotisserie is just gonna be silly uh, and waste of time. So we're gonna get everything we need to do uh, done to the body while the car is on the cart. And then when we're ready, then I will move it over to the rotisserie. It's just a smart thing to do. So let's go ahead and jump in. I'm gonna show you a little bit of what I've done so far and then we're gonna sit down and take a look at the firewall and figure out what the game plan is and then, uh, then we'll start cutting. Okay, before we get started uh, showing you what I've already done up by the firewall, uh, this is what I've done in the trunk. I made this piece here and uh, it's got a nice little shape to it. It fits in there really nice. And I got a lot of great suggestions from you guys about materials to use. Um, ABS seems like the one that most of you are suggesting. A friend of mine's a mechanic, aircraft mechanic, uh, and uh, he got a hold of me and he said they use something called uh, Kydex, I think. So I'm going to look into all these and see what's available to me locally. And, uh, you know, it doesn't have to be, I mean, they're just panels, so it doesn't have to be anything, you know, carbon fiber or anything. So I really appreciate the suggestions and uh, that's going to be coming up some other day. It's not, uh, I don't need to be doing it right now. I can't get distracted. Let's go ahead and look up uh, what I've done already inside uh, on the back side of the firewall. And then we'll take a look at the front side. Okay, so last night I was working on uh, getting kind of prepped to get going on the firewall. And uh, this area right here was kind of uh, shaped funny and not to mention all those uh, ball peen hammer marks from the, the header installation from before I owned the car. So what I did was uh, I made this little handy tool right here. You can see that I smoothed that off and that's the radius of over there and I just kind of made it into an air hammer uh, shaper. So and it worked like a champ. So as I was hammering away with uh, all kinds of hammers and I wasn't getting anywhere and then I decided to go ahead and build that and it worked out great. Probably make some others a different size pipe. So uh, that's kind of all smoothed off over there. There's some holes that need to be welded in. A lot of this piece right here, the tunnel uh, is gonna be saved, but we're gonna be coming across and leaving that and then kind of coming across here and get rid of all this other shape here. So. Uh, I spent a little bit of time, maybe a couple hours last night working on it. So uh, let's go ahead and swing around to the front and then we'll kind of talk about, uh, you know, where I'm going, what my thought is on this. Okay, so the plan is, uh, I don't know if you guys can see my chalk line runs all along that line right there. You see it run over. So uh, what I want to do is we're going to save this portion right here. This comes down and spot welds into the windshield wiper cowling and all that other stuff. So this is about flush right here. So I want to go along here and cut all these spot welds and peel this off. We're going to follow that all the way around. And then we're going to come down here and out. You guys can see my dotted chalk lines right there. So this is the portion. That's where the body bolts on to the chassis. And this is a uh, part of the structure, right? To give it strength. So what I want to do is cut this piece from the inside down a little bit about where that, uh, that dotted line is right there. That way when I bring the new piece on, it can come curve and then go flush and I'll do a butt weld right on this piece because that is not flush right there. And then I can weld it from the other side. So that, that piece will come down. And then when it comes over here, we're only gonna go down you know, about this deep. You see my line right there. This area is nice and smooth and flat and I like the texture, I like the design in it. So we're gonna save it. That'll probably be welded to it and ground smooth. And then, uh, then we'll come over here. Same thing, we're just gonna keep cutting spot welds and try to peel that off. And we're gonna go all the way around. Winchel, uh, winchel wiper motor hole is gonna stay, stay. And then we're gonna come around here and then kind of do the similar thing on this side where we uh, kind of make this flush right here. We're not gonna need any of this. This uh, is where the brake master cylinder goes. Booster, it's not going there. It's gonna go down here. We're, we're using uh, Hydro Boost and it needs to be level. 
Um, I don't want to tip it at it. I want it to be level and I want to lower it down a little bit. We should have plenty of room. And also the clutch master cylinder has to go over here as well. So all of this stuff is going to be, uh, you know, this will be all smooth and flat. Now we're going to follow it down here. And uh, once again, this is the area that bolts to the chassis. And we're going to kind of follow it and make that nice and flush right there. And then we're going to come down a lot deeper on this one. And it'll come over here. I'm not sure how far down. You can see all the hammer marks from the, uh, the header installation. And then we're going to come up and over. And then this uh, tunnel will come out. Now I've done quite a bit of measuring and this actually, you know, you can see it recesses in a little bit. This is where the distributor sits. Uh, I don't think I need that. I've done quite a bit of measuring over on the chassis and if I run this perfectly flush across here, should still have room. Doesn't mean that later I can't cut it out and put a nice curve piece in there, but for now I think I'm just going to go straight across and, uh, and see how it works out. Now, uh, like I said, there's a lot of spot welds to cut, a lot of other stuff to do, but what I want to get started on is this right here. Now this is the spot where the emergency brake cable came up through. I'm using an electric emergency brake actuator, so I do not need this. So what I'm gonna do is kind of cut this on, cause that's a big lump on the inside and I want it gone. And so I'm gonna go ahead and cut that from the inside, cut this, we'll uh, make a patch and we'll weld that and grind it smooth. And that's gonna be what we're gonna get started with. Um, I just wanna bust that out real quick then we're gonna get into a lot of spot welds that need to be cut. So uh, let me put the camera down. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, kind of get some cutting done over here and kind of figure that out. Okay, I got it laid out. I drilled a couple of holes here so I could transfer it to the outside. So I'll make that top cut from the outside. There's two pieces of sheet metal right there. So they're touching right there so I can make that cut. Then the other ones I'm gonna to have to cut from inside and outside. So let's go ahead and uh, bust this out. I got those pieces out and I uh, got this cleaned up pretty good. So we're going to go ahead and TIG weld the patch in here real quick. The other side, I'll probably use a MIG. It'll go a lot faster and it's a little easier, uh, easier position. And then we'll get this smoothed off real nice. I want this to be nice over here. It's kind of exposed. Plus I may be mounting something here. So I want to make sure this looks really nice. So let me, uh, let me knock that out real quick. Okay. Got the uh, patch fitted on there. I had to, uh, there's a little recess right here. So I had to bend that to kind of accommodate it. And uh, we we're about ready to tick weld it in. So I'm gonna bust that out real quick. We'll get it ground and then we can move on. Okay, this is all 14 gauge right here. So I wanted to make sure I, my patch was the same thickness so it has the same amount of strength because obviously this is structural where it holds the body to the chassis. So uh, let me get it welded up real quick and then, uh, then we'll see where we're at. Okay, we got that welded up and ground nice and smooth. It's looking really good. Probably take a tiny bit of filler to make that look perfect, but uh, that's okay. I'll do the patch on the inside, the other piece of the sheet metal, the floorboard uh, later. Once we get this all cut off, I can reach in there a lot easier and uh, get to it and weld it, grind it, the whole thing. So the next step is to start work on all these spot welds. Now, you guys know I, uh, I like to have just a narrow strip when I'm drilling these and trying to pry this off or, you know, um, roll it up. But the problem is it's hard to tell where this one stops in here somewhere. And it comes down pretty deep. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to go on the inside and I'll take a drill bit and I'll go about a quarter inch below it and I'll drill a hole and then I'll drill a hole and then I'll come out here and just connect the dots, those drill bit holes with a Sharpie then I can plunge the cutoff wheel in here and just kind of cut a section out, get it out of my way. 
and then uh, then we can start drilling these out. So let me uh, let me grab a drill drill bit and drill, and we'll go ahead and drill some holes and get us a line across here. Okay, I've got a line drawn here. I don't know what I'm going to do down here, so we're just going to concentrate on the uh, spot welt right now. So I'll come across here, up and over, and uh, we'll try to slice this chunk out. Maybe I'll go across here, I'm not sure, and just uh, so we can maybe concentrate at least on two-thirds of this. All right, that leaves me an inch, inch and a half, all the way to uh, kind of curl up. So I want to make a little cut over here, just so I can get it started. And then uh, we'll figure out, because this bends over and uh, spot welds on the inside right here. So I'm going to make a little tiny cut there, and then we're going to start drilling out some of these uh, spot welds. All right, you guys seen me drill out spot welds before, so I'm going to rush through this super fast. Finding them is the hard part. These are pretty good size spot welds. So finding them is a little difficult. Just drill a small pilot to start. Some of them feel like there's two in one spot. All right, I got a, most of those drilled, so let's go ahead and see if we can get some of these out. My uh, spot weld cutter has seen better days. I may need to go get a new one. All right, I'm gonna go through and get all these and uh, keep prying on it. Hopefully we'll go through. I'm Pretty sure this is, um, I don't know what gauge this is, to tell you the truth. I'm going to have to check it. It feels like it could be 19 gauge, could be a little bit thicker. So uh, anyways, I'm going to go ahead and get these drilled out, and then uh, I'll bring you back when we're ready to start popping this off. All right, I got these drilled, I think, deep enough. Hopefully not too deep. So I've got my trusty pliers here. It's already starting to pop up pretty good, so I'm just going to kind of Starting can this thing and see what happens. Boy, that's pretty good. That's about as far as I got them drilled out. So it's looking uh, pretty good along here. Doesn't look like it went too deep uh, on any of them actually, so I nailed it. That's pretty good. So we're gonna see when that 16 gauge butts up here if this is gonna come out flush. I think it will uh, because this was actually set a little inset on it. But uh, we'll have to see how deep they did that. I have to hammer this lip down. Now this lip here is the uh, Winchell Wiper Cowl uh, base or basin or whatever you call it because that's waterproof so water rain will run run down and run off so we don't want to penetrate that anywhere or we'll have a leak so I want to grind these really carefully and hammer this out nice and smooth and then uh, then we'll be pretty much ready right over through here that actually went pretty easy I'm pretty uh, pretty uh, stoked about that all right I'm gonna finish drilling some more and we'll see if we can get the rest of this off here okay this went actually pretty well off in one piece. Not bad. I guess maybe because they're spot welding three pieces at once, these weren't near as strong as some of the others I've encountered, but I'm glad to get that off there. 
So now all we have to do is grind all these buttons nice and smooth, hammer this, hammer and dolly this till it's nice and super flat. It's sticking up here and there. And then, uh, then we can see what we're going to do as far as that, uh, as far as that 16 gauge goes. Now, um, the next step is to drill holes right at the top of all these. That'll give me a reference on the inside. Cause like I said, I want to come down just a little bit and trim underneath that so I can, uh, put a, like a butt, a uh, butt weld on there. In fact, just sitting here thinking about it, maybe I want to cut just above it because this is 14 gauge and then I could use that as a ledge to push that 16 gauge up against. I think that's a better idea. Good thinking, Mark. So uh, yeah, we'll just cut and leave just a little sliver right along here. And that way when we lay that 16 gauge up here, it'll help hold it to the right height. Uh, this is a little thicker than what I'll be putting on here, but that's fine. I'll be able to bend this out a little bit to make it nice and flush. But yeah, that's, uh, I think that's a better idea. Let me go ahead and do, uh, do a little layout, do a little cleanup along here and get some stuff situated. And then we'll, uh, then we'll move forward with cutting some of this off. Okay, that cleaned up really nice. I hammered and dollied it in a little bit and uh, I put a straight edge from across here and it looks like the depth is gonna be just about right or maybe just a little too deep. So we may have to shim out that 16 gauge so this is a perfectly flat plane, but uh, that's, it's better to be too deep than too shallow and then have to deal with something. So um, I'm liking that. We got some holes to fill in here too. But uh, this is, came out really nice, really happy with it. Didn't drill too deep on really any of them, a little deep, but not, uh, not too deep. So all those popped off real easy. And I've made some marks right here, just a little bit up. So we're gonna make the cuts right there and just kind of cut and then come over here and cut that one off. And then we're gonna come over here and cut down and then over and then up. This piece is spot welded on the inside there. So once I get this out, I can crawl in there and kind of cut that away. And once all that's clear, then we have to sit back and kind of uh, strategize, you know, how far down we're coming over here, uh, how much of that we're leaving, you know, and then this over here is a little trickier because we're coming a lot deeper. And then we're gonna come over and just kind of leave this rough, I think, until we get that panel at least up there and then uh, kind of, you know, start eyeballing some stuff. I don't have a, a perfect vision in my head what it's gonna be like, so I'm gonna kind of get the big piece up there and then kind of let it tell me what it wants to do. All right, guys, it's looking pretty good, pretty happy. Now, nothing moved when I'm making all these cuts. You guys know how cautious I am. Um, I'm confident that uh, Ruby is a solid car. She's held up by a body mount way back there, and these also are part of the structure. So it's not like a lot of weight sitting on this car anyways. It doesn't weigh much, uh, empty like it is. So there's not a lot of stress up here. And after all, I think this is just 19 gauge. So uh, even though this is structural, it's not super structural like uh, these pieces down here are. So I'm not concerned about that at all, uh, but I'm glad it's on the cart nice and stable and level. So uh, when we do all this work, nothing's gonna move and we can get to it really easy. So the next step is uh, sit back and do some thinking, frankly. Um, I probably just wanna kind of whack some of this off maybe just to get a, the bulk of it out of the way and then get a better idea of what we're gonna do. So we'll probably go ahead and do that next. But uh, I got a mess here to clean up first before we move forward. Okay, I got my mess cleaned up so I can move without tripping. And uh, I did a little work off camera. So I got uh, these spot welds cut on the inside here and got that removed. So we're straight clean right over there. Same thing over here. Got that removed. So we're, uh, we're looking really good as far as removing the old part. And I went ahead and did the patch on the inside here for that other hole. It took, uh, man, it took an hour to get that patch to fit because the floorboard was a funky shape and I had to shape the patch to it and make it all blend. 
And, uh, but it came out nice. Um, it's just going to get carpet over it, so I wasn't too worried about the seam. But now we need to figure out what we're going to do, what we move, how we move forward. So I don't know if you guys can tell, but you can see here's the floorboard here, and there's the floorboard there. They actually, the, the driver's side actually sticks down over an inch deeper than the passenger side because you got the clutch pedal, brake pedal, and the gas pedal goes right here. So it's a lot deeper to give you more room where the passenger, they're on their own. They don't have any pedals, so at least in America. So uh, this is gonna be different. It's gonna come down straight and then roll in and match up with that one. And then this one's gonna come down farther, farther, then turn and go down. So what I wanna do right now, I think, is just chop most of this away. So you can see I've got a line drawn across there. I don't know if you guys can see that. So this is just a rough cut. You can see it rolls right there. But I think we're going to put a roll in the new one, not try to use that one. But I just want to rough cut this off to get this out of the way. We're going to go across the top there and then down and then over and just kind of come up and meet this cut right here. Just to get the bulk of that away and then we can get a pattern on there, uh, some material to pattern that so we can at least cut the top and get the piece of sheet metal up there. It's going to hang long and then we can start figuring out the rest. So uh, let, let me go ahead and cut this out real quick. And then we'll uh, get some patterning material in here and uh, get it up there and see if we can trace that shape on the top here. Okay, we got that uh, whacked out of there. I still have to clean it up so I don't cut myself, but uh, we got a gigantic hole here now, so we have to start thinking about how to, we're going to fill it. So uh, I want that 16 gauge, like I talked about, to sit perfectly along here. And I want a nice tight seam so when I weld that with a TIG welder, it, I can grind it smooth and this looks like one continuous piece. It looks like it was all made out of one piece. So uh, to do that, I used to have some newsprint around that I would use for patterning. I must have used it all up, a newsprint roll. Uh, so I went ahead and got in the closet and got some uh, Christmas wrap here. It's fairly heavy duty paper, so it's not going to stretch or move or anything. Unfortunately, it's two sided paper. Uh, I was hoping for one side to be white. So I'm just going to roll that out along here and then uh, use some magnets to hold it in place and then carefully mark along here so I get a nice, uh, nice seam. And then, uh, then we can move forward. In fact, if I can hold it up there, I might use a razor knife or a razor blade and instead of marking it, cut it later, I'll just cut it right on the car. That might be a better idea. Let me get that set up and we'll uh, start cutting this paper. Okay, I got it laid up there, pulled pretty tight. I got magnets uh, on below where I'm gonna cut and above, and then uh, it's stretched pretty flat and tight. This paper could be a little thicker, it would be nicer, but uh, it's not wrinkled or anything, so I think it'll be fine. Once I pull it off, I'm sure it's gonna retain its shape. Uh, and uh, I was gonna go ahead and just use a razor. I got a brand new one here and just try to follow it and go uh, along, but I think the chances of me screwing up are higher. So I'm going to go ahead and use a Sharpie and just kind of follow the groove here with the Sharpie and let it kind of follow along. And then I can come back and if I screw up somewhere, I can remark it and then I can cut it out. So let's just go ahead and get after it. Okay, that's it. Worked out pretty good doing it that way. The Sharpie kind of followed that, uh, so all I have to do is go through with a pair of scissors and cut that out, and uh, we should be looking pretty good. I went ahead and added about an inch on each end here because there's no flange or anything over here. I'm gonna see if we can't hammer a flange into that or do something. Uh, the fender sits right here, and I don't even think you can see this area, but obviously we want to do a really nice job. If anything, uh, nothing else, we'll do a butt weld right along that, right where it breaks over. Let me go ahead and get this cut out uh, with the scissors, and then we'll get it back up here and see how it fits. Okay, got it all uh, marked up and cut. I went ahead and put some masking tape right over the top of the Sharpie to kind of thicken up that edge so when I'm marking it on the sheet metal, it doesn't you know, wrinkle up easy. And uh, then until I ran out and then I had to use blue, a lot easier to see through that blonde one than the blue one, but I was able to do it. Uh, so I cut it and I, I cut just a little tall of the Sharpie. I don't know if you guys see that Sharpie line in there. So I cut a little proud of that. So uh, because I know the Sharpie was dropping down inside that groove and there's still a little bit of room to give. Obviously better to have the panel a little big and grind it to fit than uh, come up short. So I went ahead, I had a patch, a spot here and there where I screwed up. 
um, but no big deal. Just add some tape, remark it, cut it, and you're good to go. So I think we're looking pretty good. Let's go ahead and uh, get that off there, get that piece of uh, 16 gauge coal roll out and lay it on there and uh, get this thing marked up. Okay, I got the pattern laid down nice and flat and smooth. Got the magnets on there. Uh, so it's looking pretty good, except for one thing. I should have ordered this uh, panel, this piece of sheet metal, two inches longer. Remember, I added an inch on each side. Now, my lines do fall underneath, you know, uh, on the sheet metal, so it's not the end of the world, but I would rather have a little extra on the edges. Still not sure what we're going to do over there, uh, but it's not the end of the world. So what we're going to do is I'm just going to take the Sharpie and mark along that line, uh, the edge there. And then I'm going to use the little reciprocating saw, the air one. I just checked the drawer and that's my last blade. It feels pretty good. So hopefully it'll hold up to cut all the way through this. Um, I would like to use a bandsaw, but it's just too small for a job like this. The, the throat's too short and the blade's actually too wide to make some of those curves on the inside. So let's, uh, let's get this marked up and get it cut and hold it up there. All right, let's see what happens. I'm going to go ahead and cut right down the middle of that Sharpie. Well, that was taking just way too long. We'll get the big boy out here. Okay, I'll use a little one to do these fine little cuts here. And uh, we're ready to put it up there, see what it looks like. All right, guys, got it up there. Got a couple of clamps holding it. And it came out, the cut came out really nice. It's just, just about perfect. So you can get in there and just weld that in. Now I went ahead and put a straight edge on it, on right here, and checked if they were sitting perfectly uh, flush, but they're not. This is sitting just a little proud. If I push on it really hard, it's still just slightly proud, just a tiny, tiny bit. When I weld this, it's probably gonna pucker in a little bit anyways, and we're gonna to have to fill this. But uh, I'm gonna go, once I remove this, I'm gonna hammer and dolly that whole lip right there, see if I can squish that down a little bit because it is not the smoothest. It was just, you know, spot welded three pieces of sheet metal. They weren't concerned about aesthetics, we are. But uh, it came on, it came out really good. Uh, even ordering the sheet a little short, I'm still got plenty over here. I looked on the inside, we're perfectly fine. So it's looking really good. And I think we're gonna call this a video right here. Uh, my compressor, just before it shut off, uh, hit pressure and shut off, it made a horrible sounding noise. So I'm gonna have to get in there and see what's going on with that. I cannot lose the compressor. So I gotta figure it out. If it's making a funny noise, I wanna fix it before it breaks. So uh, I'm glad we got this far and it really wasn't that bad. We got the patch panel on both sides over there. Got all that old stuff cut off, and uh, I think we made pretty good progress. We're going to have to figure out exactly what our next game plan is on where it's going to roll. Uh, you know, kind of rough cut this thing out so we don't have so much panel there. And then, uh, then we can start calculating where we want to put that bend there and then where we want the bend over here. But uh, pretty happy with the progress we made so far. Okay guys, that pretty much wraps up this video on getting started on the firewall for Ruby. Now, uh, it actually went really well. I'm really happy. Uh, the old, one, old piece came off really well. The spot welds weren't that big of a fight. I thought they were gonna be. And uh, we got the patch panels in and the panel, the new panels fitting on there really nicely. So uh, things went really well today, except for the compressor making that horrible noise. Fingers crossed, it's nothing serious. So, but as soon as it cools off, I gotta get my head in there and start poking around. May have to pull it out of the cabinet and uh, start tearing it down, but it is what it is. Thanks for joining me here at Foothill Paint Fabrication. Don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button if you haven't already. Mash that bell and drop me a comment. I'd love to hear from you. We'll see you on the next one.